So you know, a lot of times when, when uh, vendors talk about AI ML, at least what we've seen historically, there is a lot of hype surrounding these technologies in that you know, many aren't particularly mature. You know, many of the uh, AI ML workflows don't necessarily lead to the always the exact desired outcome. So in, in our latest announcement with Zscaler, I'll talk about kind of ways that we are debunking some of those hypes in that we are introducing some very tactical and practical ways of using AI ML on top of one of the, I would say, world's largest data set in order to do specifically four practical implementations of AI ML to solve some really interesting hard real world problems. Well, for, well, first of all, let me talk about the data set specifically, because as you know, any good AI ML algorithm requires normalized, well um, curated data from which to work, right? Poor hygiene data always leads to poor outcomes. And so with Zscaler, as, as you know, our cloud sees about 250 billion transactions every day. We process hundreds of thousands of updates to our cloud. We see, in fact, 17 million files go through our cloud every day. So that's a, the basis upon we build these ML and AI algorithms. So think about 250 billion transactions every day compared to Google, which does several billion, only several billion searches a day. So it's a massive amount of scale, data scale that goes through our cloud. So with that as a backdrop, like I said, there are four different ways that we're implementing AI ML in our solution. The first one is around data classification. So if you're familiar with Zscaler Security Cloud, we provide data loss prevention, meaning that we are looking to make sure that your organizations are not leaking sensitive data out. These could be you know, health records, it could be social security numbers, passwords, credit card numbers are very sensitive information, intellectual property that may be escaping from your environment, exfiltration going to third parties from which they can use to extort your company. Now, the big challenge with data, data loss prevention, is understanding and classifying the different types of data. It's often a manual process. It's often a situation where many, many complex and years and years of, of rules have to be built utilizing things like regex commands or index um, data matching to get to a point where you can understand what type of data it is. Due to the fact that our cloud sees about 17, like I said, 17 million files a day go through our cloud, we have developed AML algorithms to automatically classify your data. Meaning that I can say, hey, this pile of data looks like legal documents. This pile of data looks like resumes. This pile of data looks like social security numbers. This pile of data looks like um, something that may be a, a patent, might be going to a patent attorney. What that classification, the automatic classification then allows you to do is number one, save tons of time and effort to, to, from writing these rules. But number two, automatic set policies. So I can say, hey, I have a policy now that says if I'm using or have any sort of patent records, patent data, I don't want that to be uploaded to Gmail or to, to uh, G Drive because that's an unsanctioned application and build policy based on that. So number two is around application segmentation. So part of our cloud, our security cloud, is around zero trust network access. What that means is that you are providing a zero trust way for a user like Chris and myself to access very specific applications without giving us access to the network. Now, when that happens, there needs to be an understanding of which applications Chris and I care about for us to grant access specifically to those applications. Unlike traditional mechanisms where we would be access, given access to a full network and have access to all the applications, which is, by and large is very dangerous and leads to many of the attacks and the lateral movement that we see among attackers. So a big problem is, is the segmentation piece. Now, the cluster al algorithm basically tries to predict what users are going to need access to what applications. So for example, Chris and I are both on the CXO revolutionary transformation strategy team here at Zscaler. So if Chris is accessing a particular application, the algorithm will say, well, if Chris needs to access this application, so will I. So why not build a policy so that we can now reduce the attack surface by just letting people in our department access the application, but not let the entire company access the application. So by this, what this AI algorithm does is makes policy recommendations, saying now everyone access has access to these applications, but we see only this one department using it because Chris is using it. Why not reduce your attack surface by creating a policy such that it is limited to a particular department. And those segmentation rules then essentially write themselves and you get this really dis, um, fine grained application segmentation policy 
where only the users that need to access specific, applica access specific applications are granted that access. Going to use case number three um, is around performance monitoring. So one part of our platform is what we call Zscaler Digital Experience, which uses data captured from the user's endpoint device and their network connectivity to understand how performance, um, how their end user experience is, and if there's a problem, where the degradation is coming from. Endpoint device, Wi-Fi, ISP, backbone, maybe it's the application itself, maybe it's DNS. So this also is a big data issue in that um, ZDX captures a lot of information for every user in terms of their connectivity, what their device is doing. Um, and it traditionally was a, somewhat of a manual process. If a user had a problem, we would know that because we are using anomaly detection to, to score the user to see kind of when they're having problems. There was still a big data challenge of figuring out the why. One of the recent innovations that we've made is using AIML techniques um, like regression analysis, like correlation analysis, um, like anomaly detection to say, hey, I see this user experience degraded at this time. What else was also degraded? And maybe it was high CPU, maybe there was a Wi-Fi signal strength drop, maybe the latency spiked on a particular hop to the ISP. But this capability within Zscaler Digital Experience uses AIML to provide an ANS analysis on root cause using these algorithms by looking at the data that's presented for that particular user. And then finally, the fourth kind of the, the main area, or last area I should say of AIML, is generally with our cloud for cyber threat mitigation. And you know, there's many use cases here in terms of how we look at threats and apply these threat feeds broadly, but I'll talk about one specific example around cloud browser isolation. So this is a technology supported by a cloud that says, if we deem a user to be particularly risky, we may choose to say, we don't want them to access a full website because that might cause risk. It allows them to copy the site, allows them to give access to the source file. Instead, what if we just sent a pixelated version of that website? So it looks like a GIF. It looks like just an image on your screen. You can still work, but all the data that you might have tried to copy and paste or download or edit, that goes away. So this was something that was set on you know, more of a policy basis. But another interesting way to use AML is by looking at user behavior and the riskiness of the web page to make AIML based decisions on when to enable a browser isolated session based upon user risk, based upon destination risk, putting that together using the algorithms to make those determinations.